Hello, Rose Buddies. How is everyone holding in today? Today is the time. Uh, today was a lot uh, for those of you uh, here in the United States or around the world observing the cluster F, the cluster, the cluster F, the cluster fuck uh, that is our country right now. I didn't realize, so I have some new music uh, in the beginning. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I put together this whole like calm and dreamy playlist um, which we'll listen to as well while I'm scrapbooking later, probably the second half of the stream. And I just picked a random song in the middle to start. And we, we it, it was so, um, I don't know if dre dreary sounds, I mean, I guess it was kind of dreary, but uh, very emotional. All the songs I picked are on, were part of a genre playlist called, what was it called? Small Emotions. But I felt big emotions during those songs. Apparently I go, I go for everything tagged like sentimental or romantic and sad. Uh, but that's, those are my vibes apparently. Oh, hi Friday. Yes, club. It is indeed a yucky day, but hopefully this is a little bright spot. If you need a break from watching news cycles right now, uh, this is the first witching hours, or the witching hours, uh, which is just a gentle witchy stream. I'm going to talk about witchy books I'm reading and do some tarot talks like we usually do. And Friday, thank you so much for the gift subs. Yes, wistful music. That is much better than dreary. I was like, dreary feels too... Um, to like a solid gray where this feels like a rolling fog uh, of music. Thank you for those gift subs Friday. Um, brightens my day a little bit. Uh, but I, I figured let's today just take it, let's just take it easy today. It's the first show, but we don't have to do anything wild and flashy. I think let's just have a gentle chit chat stream. I, th I think that's what I need as a distraction, just to engage with lovely, nice humans. TK, thank you for hosting. That's sweet. Oh, Aqua Summerwoods. Um, says, Lisa, you brighten my day whenever I get to stop by. Well, thank you for stopping by. You're brightening my day. Um, to, aw, okay, this stream's already kind of giving me a little, little perk, a little something I need to, you know, just keep going. Um, so aside from just everything that happened today, which both escalated so quickly and yet also slowly over the course of four years, um, what have folks been up to? I have been binging Netflix shows as my background sound. Usually I'll listen to like Studio Ghibli piano music or there's a few podcasts that I really like. Um, but I have been binging the CW's Charmed, uh, because I believe the second season dropped relatively recently, or at least Netflix decided I might be interested in it. So question for chat, or I guess three questions. H have you watched the original Charmed? Have you watched the new Charmed? Does anybody care about spoilers for any of that? I'm at work at the tea shop right now, but not very productive. I feel like that's how the country is feeling Friday, where people are like, there's a potential coup happening. Do I have to work right now? Like, or just everyone's, everyone knows that everybody is just watching the news. Um, so it's hard to be fully focused. Aqua Summer Words. I love the reboot of it. Not as big a fan of the original as I used to be. You love being spoiled. Okay, good. Um, so Aqua Summer Woods, have you watched the full two seasons? I just started the second season of the new show. Oh, thank you, girl. Thanks for joining. Also, everyone, thank you for complimenting my hair. You can't, hold on. I'm going to try to turn my head. There's, I don't know if you can see it because I can't look at my screen right now, but there's a little bat in my hair and it glows in the dark.
Dusty says, it was weird. Job interview and a meeting back to back and everyone was just kind of evading the subject. I'm very, I promise I'll get back to talking about Charmed. But yeah, I'm very, I like being just direct and honest with people, uh, even if I do it in my own sort of gentle way. So I absolutely was like checking in with my coworkers and some of us had our own separate group chat uh, to... Um, I was about to say kvetch about the news, but that sounds like too lighthearted for what's going on. Just to commiserate uh, over what's happening and express both disbelief, but also frustration that's been building up over the past four years of this administration. Um... But okay, I missed the back half of season two. I need to get cut up before season three. Oh, okay. So I don't have a television, so I only watch on Netflix. So I'm probably not gonna get season three for a while, unless that's just wrapped up and coming to Netflix soon. Um, I really enjoyed the original Charmed, even though I, there are just in it being different times now, certainly things that were problematic about the original Charmed. Um, but watching the new season, um, or the first season of the new show, uh, they capture sisterly relationships, uh, they capture that same sort of kind of like a little bit like cheesy, hokey, uh, vibe of the original show, which I, which I liked. Um, uh, but it was less episodic. The original charm was very episodic, where they're like slowly gaining their powers, and it isn't until later in this first season and future seasons that there are larger story arcs. Um, the new Charmed has r ran right in with like an arc that ties every single episode together, um, and uh, I think it's probably a bit of nostalgia for me, where I. I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more episodic, or at least because the stakes for the first season of the CW Charmed are so high, like apocalyptic world ending already. It's like, where are they going to go from here? Okay. It's not premiered yet, unfortunately. They mentioned Le You Love Macy. Um, gosh, I real I there's something to like about all of the sisters. I like okay, I like the actresses who play the main characters. Um, I like um I like all of their personalities and I really like all of their powers and how they evolved in the first season. Um I can see where someone would really like that the show ha had more of a tied together storyline rather than an episodic storyline. Um so I don't necessarily have really strong feelings about that. But I, I don't know if it's because I can't let go of the original Charmed. But okay, here are the big spoilers. If you don't want to be spoiled about new Charmed, do earmuffs and I'll, I'll do a signal. I'll wave at the screen when it's okay to take earmuffs off. By the end of the first season, they've killed off every single elder and then they kill off every single white lighter who are witch protectors. So like the whole structure that ch the charmed world is based on just disappears and then in the second season they don't they some things happen that completely erase all the world building that happened in the first season they're relocated to seattle actually they lose their powers their house relocates and they get this like weird like almost sort of high tech command center that the elders had built before they died where there's it's almost sort of like X-Men where there's like a huge screen and they can see where witches are and when they're in trouble and they can get like a teleport tele, a teleportation portal. They get a portal that takes them to where that witch is. Um, so like, it's really different. Aqua, I think it's like I, that I can't let go of Original Charmed where I'm like, this isn't what I signed up for. It's so different. They are much more balanced, Aqua Summerwoods. That's true. I like everything they did with the main characters. I thought that was really interesting. I like that they're women of color. Um, I like their new powers. I like that their pa the power balance is much more equal and that they have very different and complementing personalities. Um, and I liked that they were younger. Um, I think especially for the CW's audience, um, that they were in college or grad school. Uh, or just out. So like I'm I'm kind of bummed they've taken them out of that world so quickly. 
those are my thoughts. I'm still going to finish watching the second season, I decided, because I, I might change my mind or get used to the changes they made. Plus, they're in Seattle, um, so I'm enjoying all the, like, little ribs at Seattle. Okay. If you have earmuffs on, you can watch again. I'm also really binging, um, or I finished binging Bridgerton with Dusty. We got sucked in, like, real bad. It was so good. Uh, we were try we really enjoyed the first episode and I tried to be really strict about making us watch um, one episode a night so we wouldn't watch it all in one night and then one night I just really needed some Bridgerton or the cliffhangers were really good and we just binged all the episode the rest of the episodes there aren't too many so we weren't there for for days um, watching in bed but um, Bridgerton, though, has me really wanting to play uh, this game called Good Society. So if you haven't watched Bridgerton, it's basically a period romance drama. Um, and there's a TRPG system called Good Society, which is inspired by Jane Austen novels, which is basically the same thing. It is so fun. It's very, like subtle scandals and shock uh, at ridiculous things. Um, but actually, starting this Friday on my channel that you're watching right now, um, we're doing a Good Society actual play, just a mini series, four episodes. So the rest of the Fridays in January at five Pacific, uh, we're doing a show called The Haunting of Good Society, which I should just tell you about now because I'll forget at the end. Um, the Haunting of Good Society um, combines Good Society, so think Bridgerton, combined with something like Haunting of Bly Manor. So maybe there will be smooching ghosts. I think it's worth tuning in just for that possibility. Uh, but we had a session zero with Friday, um, who's in the chat right now, and Eugenio Vargas, and TK Johnson, who's going to be our GM or chaperone. Um, I think they're actually called facilitators, but we decided to call it the chaperone, uh, so it's thematic. And our session zero was so much fun. It was really fun collaborating on the story and all the terrible secrets that are going to unravel over the course of four episodes. Uh, so I'm really, 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 really jazzed about that. Wait, uh, bought me a bunch of expansions for Chris. I'm so freaking, oh, I feel like Good Society is totally the a sort of game that you would love. So I'm really glad that Dr. Boyfriend got, uh, got you those expansions, cool. Every time I watch BSG, I think I won't binge it, but some shows suck you in. Wait, BSG? What does that stand for? I feel like something's going whoosh over my head. Oh, Cherry Vegas says, that's so exciting. I've seen it talked about on Twitter. I'm really jazzed to see how it plays. I'm really psyched. And then tomorrow morning, um, uh, it's honestly probably going to be in my inbox before I wake up because my, my editor's on the the East Coast, but tomorrow morning I'm paste, pasting, posting on my Patreon, uh, the Session Zero. So if you want all of the secrets up front, uh, which could be kind of interesting if you want to see how those actually end up being executed in the game through gameplay, you can get our whole Session Zero uh, edited nicely as a podcast just on the Patreon. Oh, hey Jess, thanks for joining. Uh, it's nice to, to have so many friends uh, just hanging out, even if it feels like I'm just talking and rambling in your face. I'm reading the chat, though. I've got this big jug of water that's like the size of my head. Okay. Well, I'm glad I talked about Haunting of Good Society because that was... I have like a little list of things I need to make sure I actually talk about just so that I feel less anxious. Um, like I'll, I can always fall back on the list. And that was one of the things. It was the first thing. So I'm glad I actually remembered. It's marked very important. BSG is the freaking jam. Wait, does it stand for something? Oh, Battlestar Galactica. Sorry, I missed where you actually said what it stood for. Okay. Do I need to try watching Battlestar Galactica again? I tried. I made it a few episodes in and I just couldn't get into it but everyone like everyone I know who likes all the same sort of like sci-fi and fantasy things that I like loves Battlestar Galactica is it 
a show where it builds up and after you reach like I don't know mid season one then you're hooked okay but a bit later in the series we get Lucy Lawless and Dean Stockwell okay all right I'll give it maybe I I don't know if Dusty well, actually Dusty's in in the chat Dusty have you watched Battlestar Galactica because I would definitely watch it if you want to watch it with me do you have interest in watching it? I know you like, I mean, I know they're completely different shows, but I know you like The Expanse, you like sci-fi. Okay, maybe we can commit to watching the first season um, and then, and see if we can get into it. Because I would like to. I would like to, at least for pop culture references, I'd like to, or nerd culture references, I would like to I would like to know the thing. Um, what else are folks up to? It's the beginning of the year. Do folks have resolutions or something Ashley Warren has sort of been pushing in our circles, choosing a word of the year? Fake Geek Girl says, Battlestar Galactica is a little too much for me. It's got the same vibe as 24 where it's like, this is too much stress. Oh no. I never watched 24, or I think I've seen like one random episode, but I know enough of it to understand uh, what you are saying. I think I'll give it a try. It's one of those shows that each time you watch it, you pick up something you missed before. Pretty high octane. I think I can handle that. The shows that are really hard for me to watch, uh, including shows I want to try to watch, but I just need to kind of get over... Uh, let me finish a sentence. The shows that are really hard for me to watch are the ones that are extremely awkward. Um, but if I push through it, I usually end up enjoying things. So a lot of British comedies that are really dry and lean on awkwardness or Schitt's Creek, I really want to watch because I've heard it just gets better and better. But the first few episodes are so hard. It's like painful. It's painful to watch. Um, TK says, content warning because there are issues of infiltration and the Cylons hiding having sleeper agents. There are a lot of mob mentality story scenes, including one where a female soldier is assaulted for not being human. Whoa. Okay. Thank you for that content warning going in. Yeah. Jess says Schitt's Creek is finished Schitt's Creek recently. Definitely worth it. Yeah. That's what I, I, I just keep seeing tweets from people where they're like, I just finished Schitt's Creek and I'm like, like sobbing or like it was so good and I need to I need to watch S get super heartful after a minute okay Dusty we need to try and push through that one too because I know that that was um I know that was uh tough for you to get through too the first few episodes let me just talk tv for a few hours I'd be down for that <laughs> I also watched the new ballerina drama uh, on Netflix. This has nothing to do with witch stuff, so I guess I'm sorry if you tuned in for my gentle witchy stream, um, but I'll just briefly talk about it. Um, I think it's called Tiny Pretty Things or Tiny Little... Tiny Pretty Things, I think it's called, and it's about a ballet school. Um, yes, yes. Friday says Black Swan means center stage meets Gossip Girl. It reminds me so much of Gossip Girl. Friday, I immediately thought of you and was like, I wonder if Friday would love this or hate this. Um, uh, and also uh, Pretty Little Liars, uh, it kind of reminds me of, although I didn't see all of that show. Um, but very like teen drama, super sexy, uh, but also lots of um, dark secrets and it starts with a with a murder and like very slow burn unravels everything. <laughs> I saw it saw it all in the day it came out all in one day. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I 
don't know if I did it in one day Friday, but I think I might have done it in two or three days. I just watched all of them. And I was like, I know this is really dramatic and melodramatic and not necessarily the best brain food, but gosh, this is my guilty pleasure. So I really enjoyed that one too, if people need a binge. Ooh, okay. We're shifting to uh, chit-chatting about some resolutions um, or just goals for the year or talking about themes for the year. Aqua Summerwoods wants to get the TRPG that they wrote, Public by Beltane, which I think is an awesome goal uh, and nice to set deadlines. Um, something I did was I did a sort of brainstorming web chart of uh, this is my year 2021. Uh, these are goals that I want to see this year, in the next few months, or maybe even the next five years. Um, and then expanding off of those, or okay, what are the steps that I have to do? And then adding in deadlines to each of those steps. Oh, go, go, bub. Don't be guilty about what brings you joy. Oh, hi, Girl Wonder. Thanks for joining. Nice to see you. Aqua Summer Words. I have it ready to play, but not ready to sell, if that makes sense. Well, that you're close. Um, it sounds like you've made a lot of progress on that. So well done. I will talk a little bit about what my witchy resolutions are, or my spiritual goals, which I have my notion up here. So let me see. Taking a look at my spiritual goals, a lot of them are actually secretly kind of work freelance goals or self-imposed ones. Like I, I had written, actually I have it on somewhere near me. Where is it? Oh, here it is. I published my tarot zine, um, which is on my Etsy still uh, in 2020. And I want to do like two more of these maybe throughout the year, um, which isn't, I guess it's spiritual in that I have to explore tarot in order to come up with more spreads to write about in the zine. Um, but tying it to a sort of tangible project like this uh, helps me actually follow through and do the thing. Oh my gosh, Bug stole my cozy wisdom. I found it in her treasure cord. So cute. Glub says, I'm buying a house, but the process has been so slow. We got the sales contract next week. My only goal is to have a place for my family that is ours and uh, nest possibly forever. That is a really amazing life goal, personal goal. Um, so I really hope you're able to get navigate the rest of that process as swiftly and painlessly as possible. I know getting our house where we are now um, the sort of back and forth, uh, the original owner did not make it easy, uh, but it was so gratifying, uh, once we, once we finally got in here and could start making it our own. It's nice to have, like, your forever place. Um, let's see, aside from tarot stuff, I really want to figure out how to run some sort of interactive witchy, witch workshop, um, focused on intuitive witchcraft. That's been on my goal list for a few months. I think pretty close to the start of when I started doing Tarot Tuesdays. Um, and um, so that's one of my goals for 2021. Maybe Ashley Warren might have some good tips for me since I know she runs a lot of workshops. Um, I would love to be able to do that. Uh, and then doing more tarot readings for other people. I actually thought it might be fun for us to, as we want, um, like later on in the stream, uh, to maybe try to do some, uh, I'll try to do some readings for the folks sticking around in, in the chit chat. Um, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Oh, and then one of my big goals is I want to read more in general, and my goal is to read at least five witchy books um, in full uh, over the course of the year as part of my five, four, three, two, one challenge, um, where you pick uh, five different categories of books to read, um, and then you read five in one category, four in another, etc. Um, so that's one of my just overarching personal goals. And I made this really cool reading journal uh, to encourage me to stick to my goals and also track them. 
Uh, Girl Wonder says, I'm going to go back to storytelling after a rough 2020 creatively. 2020 was rough in general. If it was creatively difficult, I think that's something a lot of people can empathize with. I was considering doing a live invocation of Artemis tonight, but she told me tonight is not the time. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I mean, after the day, you, you kind of have to be in the right right headspace sometimes. Oh, yeah. So the um, thank you, Friday. Friday says beautiful book tracking notebook. So it's got like witchy designs on it. Let me see if I can get my camera. There we go. Um, kitchen witch designs all on it. This is by um, Wax Moon Shop, their notebook. Um, and I'll show you some pages. So I've got, oops, trying to turn the page. I'm just going to just rip all the pages out. It's reading journal. I'm going to eventually put right in an index here for all of my spreads. This is one challenge I'm doing called 21 in 2021 where I want to read 21 books. So on YouTube, a lot of this is inspired by YouTube, wait, journal YouTubers. And they're all, their goals are stuff like, I'm going to read 100 books. And I'm just like, what, what do you do? All you do is read and make YouTube videos? How do you do that? Um, I don't read, I probably when I was young, I could have read 100 books in a year. I probably did. I was a voracious reader, as they say. Um, but not anymore. If I can read 21 in 2021, I'll be very proud. Um, and then this is my 54321. It says blast, oops, over here, blast off. And it's kind of like space themed. And I've already read, well, finished one book, The Empress of Salt and Fortune. So good. If you're looking for just like a little novella about, um, by a, um, uh, an Asian writer, um, and oh gosh, it's like about toppling empires, but I don't think that captures the feel of the book. It's very like subtle and soft, like kind of the whispers that happen in war rooms. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know if I'm selling it or not. It's really good. And it's short enough that you should just go check it out. Um, and then uh, I have books I want to read. I don't have a color printer. A lot of people will print out covers of books and paste them in like a pretty grid. So instead I like use this this fancy paper, like of little map backgrounds and other pattern backgrounds. Um, and I wrote in, a, I prioritized a lot of books I already have on my shelf. Um, and then these last ones here are t suggestions from folks on Twitter, where either they suggested stuff and a lot of people suggested books, or they suggested something and I looked it up and it looked amazing. Oh, thank you for complimenting my handwriting. And then people had so many suggestions, I just continued on the next page. I am particularly excited about uh, Women Who Run With The Wolves. It sounds like that's uh, a collection of stories about the wise woman archetype, uh, which sounds really cool. And then I'm also really excited about Cersei. Uh, and Gideon the Ninth uh, looks really cool. Um, gosh, uh, what did I see? Oh, Sheet Pizza says, I'm also trying to buy a house this year, but a more thematic goal is to spend more time doing self-care and activities that nourish my soul and home. I think it's really, that's a great goal, just establishing healthy habits, um, not just for your physical health, but your mental health as well. Um, and I think that will be really great energy to bring into a new home and a new space. Yes, there, yeah, I, I saw that there was a sequel. I don't know if it's related or not, the Har Harrow the Ninth, um, but yeah, I'm really excited for that. I'm like maybe 25%, maybe a little less than 25%, like 20% of the way through Mexican Gothic, um, which is the book I'm reading right now, my four fun book. Oh, hey, Sarah Grace, thanks for joining us. Thanks for the resub. Um, and Mexican Gothic is just, woo, just hit my, my chair arm. Mexican Gothic is, gosh, just everything. It's like, seems like it's a a haunted house style book, um, but I don't know what it is. I think I just really love the author's writing style. 
Um, it's like descriptive, but you're also hearing it from the perspective of the main um, main character who or the protagonist who is like sort of got like a sassy fun perspective on things. It's just a very different tone of haunted house story while also having the familiarity of everything you would want from that type of story. Ooh. Oh, tea to drink when I finish the book. I'm excited for that. Okay, this is the last part uh, that I've created uh, in my reading journal. So I have January, so I have my month spread, and I'm highlighting days where I read. Uh, some people have special codes where they'll like fill in, the, fill in a square for the day fully if they read more than an hour. If it's less than that, they draw like a little circle. I'm just like, if I read, you know what? I get to highlight the day. So I'm using pink highlighter and then I'm listing the books that I finished reading. And then if I feel like it, which I really did for Empress of Salt and Fortune, I make like a little spread for that book. So I remember what I thought of the book. Oh, hey, Gordon Greg, does that answer my question about your map of Mexico above in my book? Um, uh, no, it, it, um, the map, I don't even, where is, where do I have Mexico in here? I've got Poland, uh, a very old map. It's just a map paper that I cut up. <laughs> it's aesthetic, Gordon and Greg. It's related hair as a character in Gideon the Ninth. I'm really excited for that one. I also reordered, because um, I didn't bring them with me when I moved across the country, but the Mistborn trilogy. I remember adoring that, and I really want to reread it. So I went on a used book site and hunted down the UK covers of the books, because I usually like uh, the English covers better than the American covers. Um, and I feel like they're more, they use more like um, graphics rather than photos um, uh, or um, realistic illustrations. Uh, and I really like that look. Um, same with Circe. I, um, I ordered the UK edition of that. I just, does anyone else do that? Do you, if you're going to get a physical book, do you ever look up what the different covers are and try to get exactly the cover that you want? I mean, why not? If it's gonna take up space in your home, Ooh, Oshi Pizza also loves the Mistborn series. Was planning on rereading it this year. Um, I just remember falling head over heels. Head, blah, 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 blah. Words are hard. I remember falling head over heels for the magic system in Mistborn. Um, so I can't wait to to reread it and re-experience that. Oh, Friday. I wish I was multilingual enough to be able to get books in different languages just for the covers. The Lolly Willows book that you got in, what was it, Portuguese? So much cooler than the American cover. It's gorgeous. I really liked it. Um, so let's see. One book, so if we're going to talk a few witchy things, one book I finished, I made a point of finishing on the last day of the year so I would be able to start fresh for 2021, mm -hmm. but I finished reading A Witch Alone, which is right now my top recommendation uh, for folks who come to me asking, I really want to get into witchcraft, what do I do? And aside from wait until I get my my butt in line and actually make my workshop happen, um, I recommend getting a really good beginner's book uh, for like an overview. Really, you should be reading more books so you're getting more perspectives. Um, one of my other favorites, if someone is specifically looking into Wicca, um, is Wicca by Scott Cunningham. That was a really influential book for me. But A Witch Alone, which was recommended by Friday, is just a beautiful book. It doesn't fully lean on Wicca, which I find so many books do. It only looks through that lens, um, but looks more at witchcraft as research into your own ancestry and folklore. It makes a, li a few chapters, make some assumptions of your... Um, uh, 
of your ancestry being of European origin. Um, but it doesn't fully, which you know what, I'll take that because a lot of books just assume uh, that your background, uh, that your ancestors are from Europe. Um, and just the idea of witchcraft being this path that hasn't been wandered in a long time and a return to celebrating seasonal festivals and being closer to nature and just relearning a bunch of folklore that used to be something everyone was just taught day to day because everyone worked in agriculture to feed themselves and uh, and each other. Um, it's just a really nice approach. Um, each chapter, I think there's 13 chapters, and yes, there's 13 chapters, and you're supposed to read one per moon throughout the year, so that if you started it now um, and read a chapter by the full moon at the end of this month, you could read this whole book in the year. Um, and there's exercises and lessons at the end of each chapter that you can do uh, until you read the, the following chapter. So anyway, this is really great. Um, aside from that first chapter that talks about what is magic, according to the author Marion Green, the next chapters that really, really blew my mind uh, were near the end. Um, and um, they talked about um, doing your work to honor light. And rather than honoring the four elements, um, opening your circle, uh, honoring the the sun and the moon and the stars and planets in the sky, um, which is something that I already sort of have a nod to in my practice. But because I'm so influenced through Wicca, it's always been the circle of stones, um, honoring each element as you open a circle before you do witchcraft. Um, and so anyway, that was really interesting to me. And then there's a whole section about um, the different days of the week having to do with different planets um, or gods um, and uh, different types of practices you can do that are aligned with those planets or gods. Um, anyway, really good general overview. So I just finished that and loved it. And the witchy book that I'm reading next is... The Crystal Alchemist, uh, which is sort of a combination of being a really good reference book, uh, but also having lots of just interesting anecdotes and stories where the writer, what is the writer's name? Karen Frazier, where Karen will uh, talk about a different property in a stone, like, I don't know, purple stones. Um, are protective and good for when people travel or something. And then she'll give an anecdote of, well, this person I know was dealing with this problem um, and they were, I don't know, traveling. And so they had this stone and then this thing happened. And it's just, I mean, they're just her stories, but it makes it a little more lively than just listing what each crystal means, which is honestly the sort of book I was looking for when I was looking for The Crystal Alchemist. Um, I wanted just sort of a crystal dictionary, uh, but this book breaks down crystal colors, their opacity, their shape, um, they uh, even the crystal structure, where I still don't fully understand how you're supposed to know what the crystal structure is unless you're just looking up what the crystal structure is on Google. Um, but if you know that a crystal is ahem, 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 monoclinic or orthorhombic, then you might be able to gather some ideas of um, what that crystal is good for in your practice. Really, Dusty? So, Dusty. Dusty says in chat says he's really good at geology and can help me with that. I, ha I can just look it up and maybe it's like you can tell based on how a, a crystal looks. But what are tetragonal crystals? That's not about the shape of the crystal, but the lattice pattern of the crystal structure. Oh my gosh, Starlet Zombie. Got a good grade in the geology because of the in my interest in crystals from witchcraft. That's awesome. four-sided lattice. Okay. Stacked tetrahedrons. 
So let me, oh, actually I picked one where I don't know what any of these crystals listed as examples are. Um, but let's look at orthorhombic. What does that mean, Dusty? Because examples are things like um, topaz, peridot, chrysocolla, celestite, um, which we have some of these stones in the house, but I, they, I wouldn't group them together. They're so different. Irregular four-sided faces. How does Dusty, Dusty just, are you looking this up? Or are you just remembering this from your studies, your environmental studies? I was really good at identifying rocks in college. I probably forgot everything, says club. Most of it I already know, but it's been a while. Okay, I'll, I might make you go through this chapter with me and our crystal collection uh, and have you help me understand uh, if there's a way to tell just from looking at a crystal what its lattice structure is. Um, anyway, learning based on properties, like physical properties of a crystal, what its metaphysical properties might be, um, is, I, mm, what am I trying to say? Uh, I like that better than just memorizing, like this is what a tiger's eye does, this is what a garnet does. Um, and that's one of my goals this year. Last year, I really delved into tarot. I still want to do that this year. Um, but this year, I want to learn more about crystals and about herbology. Um, so that's what I'm reading now um, in terms of witchy reads. Um, and then oh, I also just had, I wanted, when I talked about reading, I wanted to show off this cute little tarot zine I got. The font is a little difficult to read. Slavic fairy tale tarot spreads, which isn't as much a problem here where I know what these words are. Um, but then like, I don't know all of the, the, fairy, the fairy tale inspired people. So I, I don't know what all of these mean or say, but I love the little spreads here. Masha Zine, oh, do you know the maker? So it's just like, it reminds me of Cozy Wisdoms, but I love that there's like a, I love the theme. And I got it because I saw someone post on Instagram and they had the Baba Yaga spread and I was like, yes, about this. Ah, oh, cool. Masha Lapier is a second generation Ukrainian American who has created several tarot spreads inspired by the Slavic fairy tale worlds they grew up with. All of these spreads can easily be used with your favorite tarot or oracle decks. May they guide you through your journeys. I drank meat and wine there. It ran down my chin, but did not go into my mouth. Yet my soul was drunk and sated. I love that. That's all on the back. There we go. And it's just a beautiful little zine. They lead the Seattle Video Game Orchestra and make armor and costumes. They're too cool for me to handle. That's so cool. Also, hi, near Dine. Nice to see you in chat. DC, thanks for joining us. We're just taking a look at this cool tarot zine inspired by Slavic fairy tales. Um, so that's on my, I want to do some spreads here um, to kind of just get back into my tarot um, I don't know. Yeah, tarot habit. My habit of doing tarot. Move things around in my stack. Should we talk about tarot? I, mean, I kind of promised you all some tarot talk. Um, so yeah, I think we should. Hold on. I want to do some stuff in. Now that I'm like narrating it, I should have just gone ahead and uh, and done it. But ba ba ba, clicking this other screen. We'll do this later, so we'll make that, okay. Now I will click here and we will transition. Yay! I'm tiny now, here in this corner, and here's my desk. I've pushed my, my keyboard really far away. It's not usually that far, um, in case that looks strange. But I wanted to be able to show folks some tarot cards and also just my new tarot deck. Oh, Friday. I brought my tarot cards to work today for some reason. I didn't know why, I just had a feeling. 
your in the back of your mind, your subconscious was like, no, the witching hours, grab your tarot deck. Um, if folks have their own tarot decks or want to use like a free app, like the Golden Threads one is really good or Mystic Mondays is really good. Download that now or go grab your tarot deck now. Thank you, Glob Glob Bob. Your keyboard is very cute. Uh, because we're gonna we're do a, gonna do a little bit of tarot learning together. Um, and first, I want to show off this tarot deck. I have been coveting for so long, and it was sold out everywhere. And they were working on a second edition, and I could have waited for that. Um, spoiler, D Dusty. I also got the second edition because they changed a bunch of cards. But anyway. Um, uh, they posted on Instagram that there was this little shop called Seeker Tarot in Australia that seemed to be like the only place that still had a few decks. So I ordered this from Australia and it finally arrived. The backs are plain black. The edges are matte black. And if these cards were in order, look at that King of Swords with the speakers blasting the truth. That's so cool. Um, if these were in order and I spread them out, they would be sort of like a rainbow gradient. Um, that's the, it's the tarot of the holy spectrum. And I guess the rainbow is the spectrum. Um, we have this betrayal uh, three of swords card. Um, I love the little details on this. Just the colors are so vibrant and beautiful. Vibrant, but not like electric. They're like somehow soft and vibrant at the same time. And little details like, look, there's an arm reaching through the clouds. And you have to wonder, did they push this person, stab them a bunch of times and push them through the clouds? Or are they reaching out to help them? Um, it's just really cool. Oh, I love the Fool card. So the Fool you have here just stepping off of a cliff. And when you go to the last major arcana card, the world, uh, they actually, you see, are walking back to the same cliff in the distance. So the cycle, uh, cycle completes itself. Hey, Zezifer, rolls in with the Fae. Well, you are certainly welcome. Oops, I'm piling things on cards that I just put out for later. I'll just kind of flip through a bunch of cards. So that folks can see. Oh, Sheet Pizza says, I love this deck. I don't own it, but it was featured in the Tarot for the Wild Soul course this year, taught by the maker's partner. I I just, the all of the artwork speaks to me so much. I find it in general a little darker, um, not just, not in color, but darker in tone than my other favorite deck, which is um, the Forager's Daughter Tarot. Uh, but I think it's nice to have tarot decks with different personality. I also really like the partner cards in this deck. Uh, like you have the lover here. Um, the people they aren't different people. The lover here shows a, it almost looks sort of like a reflection in the mirror universe. Um, of the same person you see their silhouette and the two of cups which is the other like partner love um, relationship card uh, has someone hugging a sort of like a ghost version of themselves uh, which makes me think more of like self-love and your relationship with yourself which I think is just just really really cool the one thing, and maybe they will change this in the second edition because they redrew a bunch of cards, um, is the death card shows literal death. And I really like death cards that um, go more with the concept of transformation. Uh, I've talked a lot on Tarot Tuesdays about how the death card is one of my go-tos for judging a deck. But I love this deck despite that. I won't go through the whole thing. But just showing off some of these cards and these gorgeous colors. Today, though, I wanted to talk about. Oh, God, look at this Ace of Cups. Wicked. I wanted to talk about tarot card combinations. 
So if I just call out that, um, that topic, I wonder if anyone has first reactions or ideas that spring to mind. Uh, the idea is that in a reading, unless you're doing a single card draw, you might have um, uh, multiple cards. Well, if you're not doing a single card draw, then you will have multiple cards uh, in your spread. And you can become a particularly astute tarot reader if you don't necessarily just read the cards as their own isolated things, but look at them in the context of the entire spread and the other cards that pop up. Um, this is true for spreads where they might ask you to draw multiple cards for the same question, but I think it's also equally true that cards can interact with each other if they answer different questions um, throughout the spread. Does anyone have any cards that really like to be drawn together, even if you're just drawing, reading for yourself? Um, or has anyone thought about tarot card combinations before? And while I'll give folks a moment to type in the chat if they'd like, but as always, oh my gosh, I need to get used to what direction to move my hands. Um, as always, we are uh, talking about a chapter that is in Intuitive Tarot by Bridget Elselmont, uh, who is the founder of Biddy Tarot, which is a really great resource. Um, eventually we're going to run out of chapters here and we're going to have to go on our own magical journey of finding different topics in tarot to talk about. Uh, but there's a really great chapter about tarot combinations in this book. Oh, interesting. Zezifer says, I have the Mystic Fairy Tarot deck. Each suit tells a fairy tale. So cards from the same suit feature the same character. Um, that is really cool. I wonder if you spread out the cards for that suit, um, if you can sort of get a complete story through that. And if that helps you remember the meanings of the cards too, or be able to intuit what cards mean um, without having to look up definitions just from knowing that story. Uh, Dead Fink, thank you for following. Um, so tarot card combinations um, are when there are two cards and one of the cards either sort of boosts the original meaning of the first card or detracts from the meaning of the first card or completely changes the meaning. Um, and the chapter actually gives a really good example. So I'm not going to just make something up. We'll, we'll do some exercises together, uh, but let me pick out this example. So, tarot card combinations. Okay, so imagine, say, like the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is usually, it's a card of plenty. Um, it is a card where um, you have enough to share, and usually there's a celebration with home and family. So if you drew the Four of Wands, and then you also drew the Ten of Cups, which is very much, a, a lot of times weddings are depicted in the Ten of Cups. Um, it is also, it is about having everything you need, um, uh, um, being emotionally fulfilled, having, um, finding your soulmate, uh, but being your own complete person aside from that. Um, they're both very celebratory cards. So if you drew the Four of Wands and you had the Ten of Cups, those are a combination that like really reinforce a particular message. What do folks think would be like the opposite of the Four of Cups? What would take away from it? Or not Cups, Four of Wands rather. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry. There was a bug that was like thinking about flying into my water jug and I was like, no, how am I supposed to hydrate? It didn't, though. I am safe. Oh, Sheet Pizza says, I haven't thought about card combinations, but I try to take notice of similar imagery that comes up, like in Tarot for the Wild Unknown, has butterflies on both the Eight of Swords and the Two of Pentacles, which can give depth to their meanings in context. I think that's a great thing to just intuitively pick up on. If there's a symbol that you see, uh, comes up on multiple cards, multiple cards in one reading, 
why is that specific symbol coming up? Does that symbol in itself mean something? <laughs> glub glub bub, it wasn't me. Um, so an example of a card that's like the opposite of the Four of Wands. So here you have a card that is like love and plenty and celebration. What if you drew the Three of Swords, a club, a card, did I say club? I meant card. A card about betrayal and sudden betrayal. That would be sort of unsettling. Uh, so it might mean that something bad is going to happen at this family celebration. Uh, there might be some sort of loss that happens, but either way, you have this card that's sort of taking away from the original meaning of the Four of Wands. Um, and then finally, there could be something that gives a totally different meaning to the original card. So the example that Intuitive Tarot gives is you might have the Four of Wands and then draw the Eight of Wands, which is a card about swift movement and travel and momentum, uh, which might speak to maybe the, the placing of the celebration, that this is a celebration that's going to happen overseas. Um, the example that they gave is maybe this is telling you that the reading is about a wedding in a tropical location. Uh, so that really kind of hones in what is this spread about? What are these cards trying to tell you? Um, it gives you sort of, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily uh, reinforce or detract from the original message, but it just augments it in some way, helps it be more specific. So those are, those are card combos. Um, and there are a bunch of things can, that you can think about when you're thinking about card combinations. Um, like these are different card suits. So how do the suits interact with each other? Um, uh, those like symbols across the different cards, like oh sheet pizza said, um, or if they're like people in the cards. I mean, people in cards are sort of like just another type of symbol uh, in tarot cards. A lot of different layers. Ooh, ah, I love. So Zezefir in chat says also use of an oracle card alongside a tarot spread often produces such results. Yes, I love that you brought that up because it's um, that's actually something that a lot of people do. The way that they use their tarot decks and their oracle decks together is they will do a tarot spread and then they'll add an oracle card, sort of asking like. Well, okay, Oracle deck, what is some additional wisdom that you can give me? And I think in this exercise of thinking about tarot card combinations, it's that same part of your brain that you're using. You are um, asking the same things. How does this Oracle card add to, detract from, or augment uh, the original meaning of the spread? Friday says, that's a cool approach. I like to mix decks to clarify slash amplify. We all know you are a chaos beast. Oh, mixing decks. <laughs> oh, I had a visceral reaction to that. I love that Friday and I are like opposites in so many ways, but also just love each other dearly. Oh, such a mess that you have to pick them apart after, like immediately after. <sighs> So uh, let's see. Oh, I actually want to read some of these examples. So, um, ba, 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 ba. okay. The uh, Bridget writes that often she will post on, on Facebook or Instagram two tarot cards and ask people to interpret them. Um, and one time uh, she did the moon and the seven of swords. Um, and then... Uh, she lists some of her favorite responses, which are all really different. But I'm wondering, uh, before I go into this, does anyone have an initial strong reaction to someone seeing both the moon and the seven of swords? Oh my gosh. Grinning Grig says lawful good versus chaotic good. It's all good. Zesafir says whimsy and mischief abounds. Yeah. I'll be the whimsy and Friday can be the mischief. <laughs> okay, 
So we're talking moon and the seven of swords. So here are some examples of what people said. There is something happening without your acknowledgement or consent. The moon card suggests that the action or incident is happening under your nose, while the seven of swords card is telling you that someone is doing something behind your back. That's a foreboding reading. Here's someone else's interpretation. Since the moon is the card of illusions, I would interpret this as the querent is subconsciously concerned, worried, or fearful that someone in their life is cheating or stealing from them, even though that is not what is actually going on. Ooh, oh sheet pizza in our chat says, to me, it says like being comfortable without with not knowing, an invitation to trust that the alignment will present itself. I love that interpretation. Let's see. Um, some other examples here are paranoia or unseen treachery. Um, someone else said, in a love reading, I would say it is a very emotional and spiritual betrayal that the querent never dreamed a loved one would be capable of doing. Financially, it represents theft and profit from a trusted colleague or friend. The person receiving the reading may have sensed something was wrong, but believed it couldn't be possible. This could also represent serious criminal activity, such as murder, robbery, and assault with the querent as the victim. Wow, that's dark. Oh, life is dark, I suppose. Uh, but someone else interprets this as cards combined suggesting self-betrayal or self-sabotage. The moon card governs our intuitions, fears, and unconscious thoughts. The dim and murky dreamlike margins of our own minds, our own selves. There's an element of the shadow self in this card, combined with the seven of swords with its implications of betrayal, deception, and escape. I would interpret these cards to mean that on some deep hidden level, the querent is working against his or her own best interests. So, I mean, with the Seven of Swords, folks are definitely um, uh, finding some darker readings, uh, readings that folks might not necessarily want, uh, true of many swords spreads. Uh, but it's interesting, the way the, the moon card interacting with the Seven of Swords changes in subtle ways uh, how people interpret that reading. Zesifir says, creative madness, failed plans. This sounds like artist block. Glub glub bub adds imposter syndrome. It does sort of feel like um, if you think of the moon as your shadow self or of illusion, that it could be saying that the this betrayal, um, this trickery um, is is in your head. You're doing it, um, and it's it's not real. You're also in control and can stop it. So our exercise then is we're going to choose a card and I picked a few here for us to choose from and we'll talk as a group about what would be a reinforcing pair for this card and what would be an opposing pair. <gasps> the moment you gave this car combo example, Nico Cases, I wish I was the moon tonight, came on the work radio. Ooh, we're making magic. So the cards that I've chosen for us to talk about are the Four of Swords, which is this, I wish I had brought my Forger's Daughter deck downstairs so that we could all look at it alongside because the four of swords and forager's daughter is very much about restoration oh armadillo gardener i love your name and also thank you for following it's about restoration it's about hibernation uh it's about um self-care that four of swords this four of swords they're on a grave um, so, like I said, a much darker interpretation of the card. Um, and this is how I envision the card in Friday's head. I know that she hates cards that feel stagnant or that are asking you to be still. Another card that we could talk about uh, is the Two of Pentacles. 
So very much a card about um, about balance and maintaining balance. Uh, this card, I feel like, um, shows that in the background where you see um, some looks like homework and documents and pens and pencils, but also a television with a console, a typewriter in the background. This card to me is specifically the imagery speaks to work-life balance. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this card I picked was the Five of Wands, a card of conflict and everything sort of being stuck and tangled together and something needing to give, people needing to communicate, someone needing to relent, someone um, uh, needing to make a compromise for things to move forward. Also, sorry, I've got like a tickle in my throat. Oh, goodness gracious. Is there a card here that speaks to you all in the context of this exercise we're going to do? Are you feeling the Four of Swords, the Two of Pentacles, or the Five of Wands? I feel like you can also tell that this is me. Um guiding us in this exercise because I chose all minor arcana. I feel way more comfortable with the minor arcana than I do the major arcana. All right, so if we're is feeling like the five of wands sounds like many co combo card possibilities. We could totally do five of wands. Heck yeah. Okay, we're gonna do Five of Wands. So Five of Wands is a card of conflict, um, as I just described, uh, in Forager's Daughter deck, uh, which is sort of, because I learned, uh, did most of intuitive tarot with Forager's Daughter, when I see a card, my brain sort of flashes the images of the Forager's Daughter uh, tarot card to help me remember meanings. Uh, useful uh, in that I also kind of like quickly compare symbols in my head. Oh, wow. Armadillo Gardner says, oof, to that five of wands. It showed up three days straight for me in my daily draws a week ago. Oh, don't you love slash hate it when a card kind of stalks you? I've had I've had a few cards, not always bad, quote unquote, bad cards. Um, uh, but I've definitely had times where it just feels like I'm drawn to a specific card for days on end. But... Okay, so a card of conflict. What do you think would be a good reinforcing card pair for the Five of Wands? I can think of like the entire suit of swords, <laughs> I feel like, um, would be a great reinforcing pair. Um, which makes me want to try to pick something that isn't a swords card, uh, a different conflict card. Um, I feel like uh, the fives in general uh, might be a good direction to go uh, because the fives are very thematic. They're very much about... Um, about loss and conflict in some way. So uh, there is uh, the Five of Pentacles, where which is a card of lack and poverty. Um, maybe they're even being help, but you're not seeing that there's help there. So the Five of Wands, that could, that could be reinforcing in that it's telling you, well, here is maybe a source of the conflict. Uh, if we did want to pick a Swords card, I would say the Three of Swords um, is very much a go-to because that's a card of sudden, horrible, terrible betrayal and loss. The Ten of Swords, another card of loss, um, very much leads to conflict. 
Zesifer says, conflict, conflict burns like a candle wick any night. Nights are made to settle conflict. Um, I really feel like um, the Knight of Wands, I, I don't know if I, it would be my first pick, um, but the Knight of Wands, so the Knights are represented by the element of, um, of fire and wands are also the element of fire. So it's fire and fire, um, uh, which I feel like makes the Knight of Wands very headstrong, almost too eager to rush forward, uh, which I feel like he probably gets into a lot of fights is what I'm saying, I guess. What would be a card that detracts from that conflict? Um, so you've got the Five of Wands, which is conflict. Um, oh, I was about to jump in right away, but I'll let me pause for a moment and see if anyone in chat wants to chime in with their thoughts. Oh, cool. Sorry. Um, you folks can't see it, but Friday posted in our witchy Discord, uh, the Rose Buddies Garden, a picture of their five of wands, which is like a lionfish or some sort of fish with lots of little spindles um, and fins uh, tangled up in coral wands. And that is just the coolest Tekken, the prettiest five of wands I ever did see. Uh, Zazafer, perfect choice. Temperance, of course. Yeah, temperance, balance, um, being level headed very much the opposite of conflict. Um, I think that's really great. Uh, also, what comes to mind for me is maybe uh, the um, Three of Wands, I think it is. The Three of Wands is usually about stepping back and looking uh, from a higher vantage point to see the perspective. Um, so I feel like that uh, would be really interesting. So almost sort of like telling you this is how you get out of the conflict. Ooh, Friday says the star guidance, often community based. Oh, Jess, thank you so much for dropping that link in chat. If you want to see Friday's card, uh, Jess uh, dropped that link for you. Um, star is great. High priestess, maybe too, says Oh Sheet Pizza, that deep knowing or even the hermit. I definitely feel like both the High Priestess and the Hermit have a sort of step back or and be above the conflict, um, just vibe to them. These are all really great choices. Three of Pentacles, a very community-based card, a very lively card. Um, a happy card, uh, the Three of Pentacles. Uh, that would be an interesting to see that in a read with the um, the Five of Wands. Uh, Friday says that the pretty card in the link is from Orion's Tarot. All animals, gorgeous art on every deck. I've seen you posting pictures um, on your own socials, uh, and it's yeah, that's really really pretty. If I hadn't just bought two of the essentially same tarot deck, um, I might be tempted. Um, does any can anyone think of any cards that would just um, pair just in an interesting message changing way? Uh, the five of wands. I feel like the moon would be a really interesting choice with uh, this conflict card. I, I wonder if it's saying that both sides have kind of made up in their head this illusion of what this fight is about and this fight does not need to happen. That could be an interpretation. Um, goodness. I'm trying to think, like, I'm thinking, I'm very focused on Major Arcana in my head right now. I wonder if something like, like how would the magician even combine with this card? A card about that creative spark and manifesting what you want. 
through conflict? Will this conflict, if you move on from it, will you be able to get there? I guess that really depends on the spread. Ooh, Friday says, I feel like any cards to do with fear or greed would be an interesting counterpart. Both of these feelings can cause a tangled freeze. Look, there's like a fly. Go away. I swear, one fly got into the basement and now it's a terrible multi-generation battle between me and them. Two of Pentacles, a card of balance with a card of conflict. That would be really interesting to see in a spread together. Yeah, I feel like, is it the Four of Pentacles that often warns about greed? That would be almost sort of, I feel like that would, depending on the situation, like this, like you said, this can be conflict, but also fr being in a tangled freeze, as Friday says. It doesn't necessarily have to be like you're fighting with a person. It could be yourself. Uh, oh Sheet Pizza says, I feel too like the magician with five of wands would be saying that you have the tools to be able to clear the conflict, like a regrounding reminder. Uh, I think so. My counterpart, I totally meant enhancement. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying, Friday. Yeah, so that's our little that's our little tarot lesson for today. What do you people think about card combinations? Is this, so this is something you can practice by yourself. You can do, um, you can choose a card and, uh, and then choose a different card and think about how they would combine together. You can, um, or choose a card and then just like we were doing now, think through different examples that would complement or detract. Uh, you can randomly draw a card and do that same exercise, uh, make it a little harder. Or you could randomly draw two cards um, and challenge yourself to think about, well, how are these a tarot card combination? I think if you do that exercise and you practice it, um, it will become second nature to you. Um, or when you do readings, um, you'll see two cards that you had thought about pop up. And I think that'll add a lot of nuance to readings, different layers. I believe the Four of Pentacles in the Santa Muerta deck is the Bridezilla Kaiju card, super greed oriented. Oh, actually, while I have all you tarot heads here, can we talk about my Four of Tentacles? Tentacles. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I can't believe I said that. Can we talk about my Four of Pentacles? And we'll have some tarot shuffly sounds as I search for it. I was talking to Dusty about this last night. So the Four of Pentacles in Forger's Daughter is a blue jay who is just hoarding a bunch of stuff. And it's very much a card that warns against greed. Uh, which is what I associate the card with. Um, this is this deck's Four of Pentacles, um, and this reminds me more of a card of rest uh, than greed. Uh, it reminds me of the Four of Swords, uh, which was honestly the same position that the person was in. Uh, just instead of gravestones, we have trees. Um, I say that like that's nothing. That's a big difference, but there are a bunch of similarities. Um, and the Four of Cups, which is n another traditional rest card, has someone who's like retreated into themselves and they're drinking a bunch and they have a bunch of empty cups in front of them. Um, Friday says, that gold pentacle is so bright, it looks like a pry it from my cold dead hands kind of look. I guess, but like, if you look, I don't know if you can, it's hard for me to, oh, there we go. Oh, no. Uh, I'm trying my best to get it to focus clearly. Um, their hands aren't like clutching it. It's just a very calm, restful card. And this deck doesn't have a rest card that feels um, calm and restorative. So I just, I wonder if this card has a different meaning. It doesn't feel greedy to me. 
Zephyr says greed like a dragon resting on its hoard. My intuition tells me that I'm trying to force this to be a greed card, but it's not what it's telling me. And that's uncomfortable for me because before Intuitive Tarot, I was very much a by the book person when it comes to tarot, at least. Oshi Pizza says, for me, Four of Pentacles often speaks to wanting control over a situation that likely isn't something we can control. Oh, I love that. Armadillo Gardner says, it's giving me a bit of a running away from society feeling. It's simply hiding away in the woods with all uh, that they have, a run and hide kind of hoarding. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, Grinning Greg. I felt similarly, but more like it being clutched at for security. I could see this being their security pentacle. I can see that. Okay, you guys are all helping me add a little more layers and nuance, and it maybe has the same meaning, but it's coming at it in a different way. Um, so more of a subtle difference than I originally thought. I knew y'all would help. With your deck, I hear like even with what you can control, the trees will still grow. Maybe an invitation to redirect or see the bigger picture. Oh, you, you all are so good at tarot. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay, well, this is, I'm working with this deck um, a lot more these days as I try to familiarize myself with the imagery and like get the cards to a nice feel when I'm shuffling them. I uh, I appreciate you all talking me through that card. I just wanted some other opinions on it. Ooh, I see another ping in our Discord. Four of Pentacles uh, for Friday is an armadillo wrapped around a glowing pentacle moon. Doesn't scream greed like my other decks. Yeah, that armadillo also looks like it has a security pentacle. And thank you again, Jess, for dropping that in the chat. Appreciate it. Okay. So I wanted to spend some time just doing some gentle uh, Book of Shadows writing, but I also wanted to show you what's in my Book of Shadows so far and also show you all some um, some cool stuff that's that I found on Instagram, witchy Instagram, um, and maybe f show you some accounts that folks want to follow, but also just some cool posts. Uh, but I don't know if I can get to both. Um, is there one that y'all would be more interested in seeing now or, or later? I feel like ending with scrapbooking uh, is probably, would, would probably be what I would usually go for. Turn on some nice tunes, probably put my headphones on so you're not hearing it twice. Um, I don't know. Let's... I can always do the Instagram stuff next time maybe in our lead in chat about Netflix a little less. <laughs> yeah, I want to, I'm really excited about my book of shadows. So I showed you all my reading journal. Oh my gosh, grinning Greg, it would be a good bookend, so to speak. I see you. So I showed you all my reading journal. And that was just the beginning. So I started watching not just reading journals, but all sorts of journal YouTube. And then I found a journal with Chloe or journals by Chloe, something like that, um, who is a journaler who has sort of like a spoopy aesthetic like I do. And it she makes life journals, which are just creating spreads about whatever she feels like scrapbook well they don't call it scrapbooking they call it journaling whatever she feels like journaling about so there's like my 2021 in pictures or here are my favorite movies here are all the movies that I watched um this month uh or this is my favorite band I feel like doing a spread for them and it just made me think well I really want to do a life journal because I just like journaling in general and I feel like I've transitioned to using a written planner instead of a bullet journal and now that I don't have that flexibility of being able to just write notes or doodle um, as much because I don't have the space like I would in a normal notebook, I miss that. And so I wanted a life journal, which just immediately evolved into being my book of shadows. 
So, okay. Hold it here. Or let me move the mouse. Okay. Uh, this is an Archer and Olive notebook. Uh, so in case folks are wondering how there's the cutie little moon and there's craft paper pages uh, that are dotted. Um, and I pasted in my word of the year, which is transmogrify. Uh, and then I wrote life journal, even though it just immediately became a book of shadows instead. Uh, and here I have some pictures, uh, their aura photography from 2015 when I was super duper depressed. And then 2016 when I returned to the same place um, after I'd left my job and was finding myself again. Oh, oh, Sheet Pizza wants to know, what is a book of shadows, if you don't mind explaining? Um, so if you, we started out watch, talking about Charmed. So if you watch Charmed, they have a book of shadows or a grimoire, which is full of spells passed through generations. Um, I don't know if their book is ever expanding, but it's just full of spells and, and magical information and reference uh, pages. Um, but I think essentially a book of shadows can just be what your journal is um, for your witchy journey. Um, some folks feel like they need to reach a certain level until they have a book of shadows, but I think um, you should just start one as soon as you start your witchy journal, even if it's uh, just you like writing your notes of things that you're you're learning about or your favorite quotes from books, uh, witchy books that you're reading or journal entries about, well, this is what I did today. Um, you will be able to look back and see what your whole journey has been. Yeah. A grimoire, I think of a slightly differently. I feel like a grimoire is more of like, this is a book of spells, um, at least in my mind. But I've also heard them interchanged in certain contexts, too. So um, a friend got me a subscription to Enchanted Living magazine. So a lot of the images that look like they're cut out from a magazine are from that magazine uh, and also Witchology magazine. Um, I have a bunch of issues where I know I'm not going to reread them, but I find the imagery really inspiring. Um, so I did a lot of cut and collage. So this page is just going to be an index page. Once um, I'm a little further into the notebook, um, I might want to be able to quickly flip to a page that talks about candle colors or I'll eventually copy in that crystal information. So if I want to reference my lattice structures uh, that um, I, I can number the pages with stamps uh, and write down stuff here and then quickly flip instead of having to flip through the whole book all the time. This is while well, it was still a life journal. It's my 2021 in pictures and I have spots for pictures to be put in up through August. Uh, and I got a tiny little printer, a little photo printer, and I printed a picture of myself and it says January, new year, new look. Most of my pictures are witchy anyway, so uh, it'll still uh, be thematic with my book of shadows. Next, I've been working on copying information from my 2020 Book of Shadows. I normally wouldn't copy over everything, except even though one of my resolutions last year was to write in my Book of Shadows more, I just didn't. So there weren't a lot of pages of information, so I wanted to have them in here as well, so I don't have to reference like a slightly filled in notebook. Uh, so. Here, I made this look like a little Polaroid and it looks like they're doing some candle magic. Uh, and I wrote out uh, the different color candles and what those properties stand for. Uh, and then I don't use, I don't even remember what they're called. They're like Viking runes. I don't use those. I use these witches runes where there's 13 of them and they have these different symbols that you see on the page here, like a sun and an eyeball and a star and these, um, uh, this intersection of arrows uh, for crossroads. Um, I have some bone runes, um, I think cut up from a uh, foraged antler. Uh, and so I wrote down what all those meanings were on little slips of paper uh, and collaged them. Uh, next, I have a page for a spell that I wrote. 
Um, and so found it's for a spell jar. So I found an image of a spell jar. And then I was nervous still about writing in the notebook itself. So I wrote in a different piece of paper um, and then glued it in and also accented it with some tarot card washi tape. Here is a spell uh, that's actually from this book I have that's like 5,000 spells. It's like super chonky, this thick. Uh, but I immediately looked up what were Chinese traditions uh, in that spell book because it has spells from all different cultures. Uh, and there is a uh, ritual for drawing down the moon uh, and making a magical mirror. So I copied that uh, into my, um, into here. I also have a protection spell here. Uh, I printed on my little printer a little photo of myself uh, in the woods. Uh, and here I was braver and I actually wrote in the notebook. Um, and then this starts my section of all the things I copied from Intuitive Tarot. Um, so I uh, put in this really cool little print of a death uh, tarot card. And yes, Friday knows this washi tape. <laughs> uh, sent her a, a bunch of rolls for a little collab that we did. All right. I love this cutie little page here that says tarot in really, really tiny font. Oh, it focused for just a second. Oh, okay, camera, whatever. Um, here I have information on all the different tarot suits, uh, which I wrote out, uh, as well as some basic information like tarot reveals and reflects back inner wisdom and intuition into universal wisdom. Um, and I wrote about the major arcana being like our vital spiritual lessons and also our minor arcana, arcana being circumstances that impact our daily lives um, and being omens of the present that they can change. You are still in control of your life. If you change, the cards will change as well. Um, here I wrote in pencil so that as I um, learn more about the tarot cards and their meanings uh, grow and change for me. I can feel like I can keep adding to this page. Uh, so it's each suit uh, of the minor arcana, ace to king, um, and then just a few keywords uh, for each. Um, and then I wrote, uh, I made a tarot numerology list. So for the minor arcana, um, uh, a list of one through 10 and what those numbers are associated with. And then I also wrote out the fool's journey. Uh, there's half of it here uh, on this page. So if you're not familiar, the fool, the major arcana is all about that first card, the zero card, uh, the fool, and each of the characters they meet along the way through their journey until they ultimately return to uh, through the world card back to themselves and cycle through this journey again. Uh, so I've written that out as a story uh, line by line uh, and totally ran out of space. So it's continued on the next page. I also have um, listed here some uh, little excerpts from A Witch Alone about what magic is. Um, and it's on top of an image of foraged mushrooms. Uh, so it says magic is real and you can make it. Um, and there are things like a path overgrown, lost in the modern world, traditional crafts, uh, unwritten wisdoms of witchdom, sacred spaces and protected places. All of these are what magic means to me. I love Miriam's, uh, Marianne's interpretation. Uh, so those are all in my notebook. Ooh, Armadillo Gardener recognized the death card. Yes, I have this deck as well. Um, and it's like beautiful and whimsical. It's all supposed to be taking place in like a dream world. Um, and the death card, I just love the like whimsical colors um, uh, of it, even though it could be such a dark card being a death card, uh, but it's in this palette of purples and pinks. I love it. It's like Technicolor. Um, and that is... Oh, that didn't take as long as I thought it would. Yeah, okay, so that is my uh, my Book of Shadows so far. And there are a number of things that we could add today. I'm really proud of how it's turning out. Um, but I wanted to add either, uh, I have a little header that I made uh, that I cut out for writing everyday magic rituals. 
So we could do a little page on everyday magic. Um, I also, we could make, we could just craft some little magazine envelopes to go throughout. I, for more private entries, I want to be able to paste into a really pretty spread an envelope and then write on like a little slip of paper what I wanted to, like a journal entry or something, and then put it in the envelope. Uh, so we could sit here and look for little magazine pages that have pretty patterns on them that we could turn into envelopes. I'd be down for that. Um, or we could do a spread on, um, I want to do a spread on different ways to, to open ritual circles. Uh, Cause I have in my old book of shadows uh, from last year, two different ways. And then I want to add the light focused one that I talked about at the beginning of the stream from a witch alone. Um, and then I eventually want to write my own, uh, just this is what I intuitively do. Uh, sort of ritual. Friday says you're making me want to actually use my squilly and empty journals, right? I, I had so much fear of writing in. I haven't let myself buy such a nice notebook in a really long time because I know I just get scared and I don't write in them. Um, and I was so scared, but I was writing in my discord and people were very encouraging. Um, and, um, uh, ben, I think is their name. Uh, I think they, they have their handles different. Um, but um, had suggested uh, in their sketchbooks, what they do is they'll doodle something on the back page. Low pressure because it's the back page. So who knows if you'll even ever get to that page. Um, but also then you've quote unquote ruined your beautiful notebook. And so the pressure is gone and you can do whatever you want uh, on the first page. Um, I've also had a counselor, a therapist actually tell me that what they do for notebooks is just encourage people to just scribble, just scribble on the first page. And then your beautiful notebook is totally ruined. You might as well fill it the rest with your word vomit. <laughs> the, that's me adding the vomit there. I don't think that's what they said. I think I want to... Cause I'm a little bit, I haven't journaled on stream before. I think I want to um, make some little envelopes. And then once I feel comfy being in scrapbooky mode, uh, make the spread with this envelope um, on it. Or maybe another envelope that we make. I will say it took me a lot to figure out how to do this right. And because this is magazine paper, um, it's not like the thickest paper ever, but I love how this envelope looks so worn. I, I put a little, I just reinforced it with a little bit of fake parchment. So I actually love that I like folded this wrong a million times. So how about we do that? Let's transition into chill, chit chat mode. Um, let me figure out putting on my headphones and turning on some music Who are you all oh my photo printer I just got it I have this little Kodak printer the P300R mini 3 retro it came with like 60 little papers um, in different cartridges uh, and it prints out, um, hold on. It prints out little square three by three photos. Um, or they can have a white border and you like, you have an app that you can make it look like what you want it to look like once it's printed. Oh, Zezifer, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Oh, Grinning Greg says, would it be too much to cut a hole slash window in a page in order to focus in on something you want to highlight on the page behind slash in front? Um, Grinning Greg, I think that's a really cool idea. Hold on, plugging in my headphones. I think that's a really cool idea. And I think you could totally do it. I would want to have an X-Acto knife and probably a piece of thicker cardboard to put underneath the page while I do the cutting. 
Yeah, so I actually, I also have an Instax camera Friday, uh, which makes little Polaroids. Hold on, I have a picture of me. This is when we got the, the keys to the house. So that's a little Instax camera, but it's less predictable what the image is going to look like, which is part of the charm. Um, and I don't always remember to have this camera on me. So it's nice to be able to take pictures with my real camera or my phone camera, uh, and then um, just be able to format them and print them how I like. All right. Whew, this is our first time doing a chill making stream like this. So let me turn some music on. Oh, also, yeah, okay. Boop. And y'all let me know how the volume is. I think I, my sound settings are incorrect. Hmm. Okay. Let's open our sound settings. We're learning how to do a thing. Now my computer's freaking out. Welcome to the technical issues part of the stream. <laughs> uh, choose your output device. I did. Okay, let's take this out. Let's put it back in. Yes. Okay. There we go. Let me know if the music is too loud. Or too quiet. As we settle in for some craft time. A bit loud. Turning it down. I'd like, I kind of want it to be a, like a medium loudness where I could still talk. It's after work and my dog won't get out of my seat. Oh no, now I'm gonna like forget that a bunch of people are watching me and talk and or hum this to the songs. Okay. We are looking for nice full page pictures that would make lovely envelopes. I don't think picture I don't wanna like fold a person. I feel like that'd be weird if like their eyeball ended up on a piece of the envelope. An owl we could maybe do. I feel like this might be really pretty on an envelope. Oh, this would be really pretty too. Although I kind of want to save this as the background for like an herbology page. It is, well, it's either a pie or a cake, but it is some sort of baked good. This is all about uh, baking with flowers. Isn't it gorgeous? This is like a quiche, which also that quiche would make a really pretty envelope. Okay, we're gonna take this page out. And I don't want the whole page, so I kind of just want the part with the quiche on it. Oh, now he's in my lap. 50 pounds of fur and slobber, baby. <laughs> oh, called out. 
Jess says, I just chuckled because Friday would never get to baking with the flowers. She'd just eat them. I mean, is it not true though? How are folks liking the new format for this stream? I wanted to be able to talk about not tarot stuff. So I was thinking it would be nice to do, just talk about different forms of divination. So like talk about scrying a little bit. Um, talk about scrying, talk about those witches runes that I talked about and how I use those and what the different symbols mean. But I hope people really like the tarot chats too. So we'll definitely do those. <laughs> Friday says, I'll have you know that one time I managed to get flowers onto an actual cake before eating them. Oh, I would love to get to know more about tea leaf reading. And actually one of my wishes for the witching hours is to have guests on. Um, so that there would be other folks that I can chit chat with. Uh, and Friday, I would love if you wanted to talk about tea leaf reading with me. I know you've been on Tarot Tuesday. We did a craft uh, and I loved that. I'd love to do more of that. And I purposefully chose a time where I'd be able to uh, either lead into something you were doing or um, Venture Maidens, my friend Celeste. Uh, is streaming after this. Oops, sorry. I'm like not in screen. I wasn't paying attention. Okay. We've made a square. It actually also has this owl. Perfect. So we're going to make a little envelope. Collect my scraps of paper. Okay. Let me move these to the side. Let me see if I can remember how to make the little envelope. Okay. This is the outside of our envelope. And we just need to make some guidelines for us. So we're folding it into triangles twice. All right, I think if I can get it so that the little owl's head is poking out, I'd like that. So I'm going to fold the sides into the center. Are you getting nice paper sounds as I do this? Part of my favorite part of journal YouTube is that you get all like the paper sounds. Oh, Celeste isn't streaming tonight. She's directing people to Frisk on here for a Colors of Change charity stream. All right, cool. Thanks for letting me know. We'll, we'll maybe read them at the end instead. Okay, the hardest part for me was getting this so that the, the envelope would line up nicely when I fold. Okay, I haven't been saying out loud anything I've been doing. I folded these into the center. You fold the tip of this triangle just a little bit, and then you fold these like corners in. And the goal is that you can then fold along here such that you have, I think I did it. Yes. Okay. Such that you have neat little points here, but also that this lines up with um, the ends of this little flat part line up with the, the edges of this triangle part. This is does that even, uh, I'm not Martha Stewart. I'll tell you that. This could maybe be folded a little more. There. All right. All right, you know what, we did it. It's good enough for our journal. And we've got a little owl peeking out. Although I, I now realizing I want to probably put um, a liner in this envelope and that'll cover the owl. We made the exact same size envelope. We're crazy geniuses. Oh, it's a shame the back of this is so beautiful. You're not even going to see it. Maybe you will. Maybe I can figure out a way to attach the envelope so you can. All right. So then I'm going to use this glue stick. 
and just put glue just along the edge here of this flap. Just along the edges. And press down. Ah, oh, cool. Friday says the stream they're doing is called Jackbox for Justice, and there are a bunch of cool people participating. Um, I know I could just look it up myself, but um, if you have the information in front of you, Friday, does that start at 6? envelope. I, I kind of hate that a hand is the front part of the envelope instead of a cute owl. But you open it and little owls peek in. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we will pass use a transparent parchment paper liner maybe. I don't have a transparent liner. But I do have other cute liners that may feel cute enough that it's okay that we don't see the owl. Ideally, I'd like to use something. Okay, I think I'm going to cheat and only have the liner sort of visible. Ooh. Um, so that it's okay that it isn't actually taking up the full part, just where you would see it so that I can use this piece of scrap. Do we like the pop of this white with red flowers? Or do we like the, the more muted um, gray and green? Why go away? I think I might like the more muted. I don't know. Only because, yeah, what Friday says. The darker blends with the rest of the Book of Shadows aesthetic. Okay. Um, so we want to fold there, and then we want to cut about there. Be cute. Okay. Just a little bit of glue. I just need it to kind of hold in place but not be too difficult to put in. Ah, uh, already too difficult to put in. set. Okay. Okay. And then once it's in there, we'll glue the top down too. And then cutie envelope. I might like purposefully fold stuff more than I need to to get these worn lines. Because I, I think they're very cute. Maybe we can cover this hand with something. Like put the everyday magic thing over it. Ugh. I'm very upset that this ugly hand is there. 
What do I do, folks? Maybe I can put a wax seal on top of it. I don't have my wax seal on me, so I can't do it now, but that might cover it a bit. Or if I decide what I want to put in this envelope, I can put the, like, cut out a little title that will go over it. I feel like little recipes might be cute in this one. The back of this one's so pretty. Okay, let's make one more. I need to remember not to, um, oh, you can't see it, but there's a recipe on the other page uh, for Freya's Love Slices, which is basically a cashew dream cake, if you've ever had that recipe, like a frozen cashew dessert. Is there another blue flower you can cut out and use as the seal? <gasps> That's such a good idea. Hold on, let's see. If I wanted to, Oh, this one has a little in the corner. This one's really pretty though. That'd be too big. That'd be so pretty as like a little 3D element. I think I'm gonna do it. We have the other side of the spread if we, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Great idea. We can save the rest of the page. Mmm, I think Dusty's cooking. You can smell it. Yum. Let's cut out this big flower and then maybe mount it on some paper to reinforce it. And then make it and then glue it to the flap of the envelope. I think that would be extremely pretty. Are people enjoying watching uh, like a gentle crafty thing with music? I really like journaling videos, but usually those are, I watch them on YouTube and they're sped up. Look at that. <gasps> so pretty. So I don't, so it's usually much faster than this, but I mean, I'm having a blast. <gasps> so beautiful. I definitely think it needs to be reinforced because this is very thin paper. It will definitely tear. I'm debating, do I want it to be patterned? Do we have more of the matching? Aw, oh, thanks folks. I, um, I subscribe to Epidemic Sound, so that's why we've got new music. I'm never offended by your multitasking. Oh, good. Okay, we still have another page of this muted paper. So we are going to use that so that it matches. Just have a, th just, um, we'll glue it to this paper and then cut it out. And it'll just be like a thin border of the muted pattern paper. Oh, you're, what are you cross-stitching? Cross-stitch is something I love the look of, but I really don't like sewing and it's too close to sewing for me. But I, but I love it as like a, as a consumer of other people's crafts. All 
All right, let's do just roughly cut it out so we can cut more easily. All right, I think I'm getting a little better at holding stuff in the right place. This, um, this journaling hobby that I've only recently acquired is very much like I really hope I, I keep up this hobby. I've just been in it's my it's my cozy space, like a mental headspace. It's my first time ever, says Oh Sheet Pizza. I have a tiny kit that'll make a satchel with purple violets on the front. Took a minute to wrap my head around what I was doing, but now it's really relaxing. I love, violets are some of my favorite flowers, especially in witchcraft. Um, oh, this is so cute. Grinning Greg, this was a great idea. I might try and do this for a bunch of the envelopes, having like little fake paper seals. Okay, let's figure out approximately where I need to glue. All right, so it was at this point and then it was kind of a triangle from the flap. And then we'll glue a lot around this edge. I want to make little hand stitched envelopes now. Ooh. Do you is leatherwork something you aspire to do or something you you already do? I have so much respect for anyone who does leather who does leather work. It's so tough. I made a little I hand stitched a little bag and it's like it's hard to get through the leather. It hurt my hand. Oh, oh she pizza, that's such a thoughtful gift. Okay, everyone, we made the cutest envelope in all the land. I didn't think about how this would be there. I might have, well, you know what? I don't mind it. This is adorable. I'm not going to seal the envelope closed. I just want it to look like a seal. Oh, actually you might've lagged like, because you're the chat uh, is a little, a few seconds behind in the stream. You might not have seen that I only glued part of it. I, I'm now ecstatic about this. This is the cutest thing. It's gonna be very cute in the journal. Well, and you know what? We learned a little craft. We all learned together how to make tiny envelopes. We made it extra adorbs. And it's sort of lined. <laughs> we have to let the, the glue totally dry before I fuss with it too much. But I think I can smell dinner is almost ready. I know I keep talking about dinner, but it just smells good. Um, so I think this is probably a good place to wind down the stream and then raid that, um, that awesome charity stream that Friday mentioned. Hopefully the music isn't too much while I chit chat um, at the end here. Y'all let me know if you like can't hear a word I'm saying. But I really enjoyed this new version of my witchy streams with you all. It was very relaxing for me um, and also fun uh, just getting to just chat with people about TV and tarot and witchcraft um, for a few moments uh, before going back to the real world, um, one that often feels less magical, uh, but we can get through this together and change our actions and get involved in local politics and, and all of that uh, so that we can make the world feel a little more magical again. Club Club Bub, I would love that. Um, so, uh, 
I will be streaming again on this channel twice on Friday uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific time. It is D&D Community with my friends Hannah Rose and Celeste Konowich. We are going to be talking about puzzles while we drink some of Friday's delicious uh, single origin blends. Uh, so I'm very excited for that. Uh, and then speaking of Friday, uh, at 5 p.m. Pacific is the Haunting of Good Society with uh, myself, Friday in the chat, Eugenio Vargas, and TK Johnson. Uh, it is a combination of the Haunting of Bly Manor mixed with Bridgerton. Uh, there will be scandal, there will be ghosts. Uh, it should be a really fun time. If you're not able to catch it live, uh, VODs will be on my YouTube and also we're going to be releasing it as a podcast on the Behold Her podcast feed which speaking of speaking of released a new episode this week all about femmes in tabletop YouTube so much going on this week thank you everyone for distracting me for a couple hours I needed that and your friendship a lot today um, I appreciate you uh, stick around in the end screen uh, for uh, me to figure out what the exact channel is to toss you to for the charity stream. Um, and everyone, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. 